My name is Arthur Migala. I'm a professor in this class. I've been teaching mathematics for well over 25, since 1988 at the college level. So my degrees are in mathematics, computer engineering. My doctorate is in artificial intelligence. All right. Now, when you, when you take notes, you won't need, well, it's impossible to do math notes on your computer. So yeah, you won't need your computers in this room. Unless we do examples and stuff like that, we can do that, which is okay. But if anybody's surfing the web when I'm talking, I'm going to get upset because that shows zero respect for me. And that's the last thing you want to do because I give you your grade. I can make the tests easy. I can make the tests extremely difficult. So, again, yeah, no cell phones, no words. Well, and you leave them out, but don't. Because look at your last couple of days mess worth of messages that you sent and received. Were any of them absolutely necessary? Could you have lived without sending them or replying to them with I mean, yes. Unless you're a doctor, lawyer, uh parent, or your your family, you have somebody sick in your family. That I'm I'm family comes first. Which is why let me tell you how the course is structured. In my classes, there are three ways to participate in this class. Basically, you cannot be absent in my class. Another thing, the only way you can fail my class is by doing nothing. And again, it's not me give, failing you, it's you failing you. All right, remove those off your head, please. Yeah, so again, all I do is I translate your efforts to a final grade. That's all I do. And what I do is just calculate the numbers. As I said, you cannot be absent in this course because one, you can attend the face-to-face -face sessions, which is at eight o'clock in the morning. If something comes up or if you rather do it online, you can participate from home online because on the syllabus let me show you I should watch earlier but on the syllabus you have a link to this course to this classroom to the session right here so in other words everything you're seeing right now and hearing you could do it from the comfort of your own living room your bedroom or your bathtub, wherever you want to. Let's see, algebra, algebra, algebra. See in the syllabus here, where it's, it's supposed to be up on top. What road? Wrong one. Wait, wait, up here, this afternoon I'll change it. But up here you'll have a link that says uh, class meeting link or video link. And just click that. It'll take you to the Zoom page and you just participate from there. That's option two. Or don't Get yourself a ticket or an injured. If you're running behind, don't rush to get here because you can participate on your computer at home or wherever you are. The third option is I live stream all my classes, which means I record everything I'm saying and everything I'm writing. So, and then afterwards, I scan my notes, turn them in PDFs, and then I send them to everybody that afternoon. The videos. So if you something comes up and you or you'd rather if you if you're working or something or you're just exhausted, watch the video later on and, and you can follow along the notes which I have there. It, so again, those are the three ways you can do it. You can't be absent. Just the only way you can really fail this course is not by doing anything. You're just just sitting there doing nothing. So so that that is to help students, but some students prefer 
online stuff. And I had a couple of older people say, no, I don't like online classes until they ask them, well, why don't you ask questions during class? I'm embarrassed. I don't ever think I'm dumb. I said, well, well, do it from home and you can ask questions. When you do it from home, nobody can see who you are. All you hear is a voice coming through the speaker and that's it. It's the same as now if, if you ask a question here, then everybody sees who you are and everybody's staring at you. So again, so it's up to you. I'm, I'm not going to make you do it one way or the other. Communications. I know you had other teachers that, okay, said, how many of y'all had teachers that said, if you send me an email over the weekend, I won't reply it till Monday. Is that fair to you? Because when do you do your homework usually? Weekends? That's not fair because not, now you're stuck. You can't go any further. You're done. That's the reason I use the Remind app. You're, uh, who's not familiar with Remind? The Remind app is simply an app that, that communicates through your phone. How far is your phone from you right now? <laughs> How far is it ever away from you? This is probably the farthest it's been away. If, if it's any further, you start going through withdrawals. So, and because of that, I am available to you 24 7. As long as I'm awake or not otherwise occupied, if you get stuck in doing work or anything, then send me a message. I'll respond to it. I was up last night till two in the morning asking, answering people's questions about the first day, the stuff that they really didn't understand we talked about today. And again, I don't, I don't mind it. If you if you have a, a job you work till late at night and you can't really meet till like two three in the morning and you have questions, shoot me a message, give me time to take a break, and then I, I could meet you up on Zoom th at that point. But my the the progression of stuff on how we answer questions is when you're doing your homework, the first line of you, what you have to do before you ask me any questions is watch the video, see how I answered it on there. If that doesn't work, then there, I'm also, I give you links to the publisher's videos. Maybe that might help. Three, I'm also going to give you the links of previous classes. And I'll show you what those look like. I'll give you, I'll give you the links of previous classes. So here's an example. It's going to be clearer than this. You'll have the first two columns will be lectures, lecture videos and lecture PDFs. And the next one will be solutions, videos, and notes. Because what I do for each of my classes, I do the homework assignments with y'all. And I work them out. And it was, you're not going to get the same one I do. All It's going to change you the numbers, but it's going to be the same concept. So each, each one of those video solutions will be miniature lectures. How did I solve? What did I do? Why did I do my steps? So, and then if that doesn't help you, then contact me and then we can be on Zoom. Because we, when you contact me, I'll try to answer it over Remind as well. If that doesn't work, then last case scenario, we'll meet on Zoom, which I have no problem with. So, again, I need you all to do your two cents worth as well. Instead of just start panicking. I had people that are just first, they get stuck once I'm panicking and they, they, they call me. And don't, don't, just, that's the last, last, last resort. Or if something comes up and you can't make it to class, you'll be gone for a couple of weeks. I had one student yesterday said, sorry, I didn't come to class. I woke up with pink eye. And they said, I'll be out for a couple of days. No, you'll be out for a couple of weeks. Because if you ever had pink eye, it, that, that spreads like wildfire. Also, another thing, how many of y'all ever, ever came to class had to wait in the hall outside and find out the teacher's not showing up because something happened. That's not fair to you, especially in eight o'clock class. So if I can't make it here for whatever reason, I will send you a remind message. As soon as I find out that I won't be here, I'll send you a message so that you can either just turn back, go home or stay home. All right? Because I don't want you standing outside wasting your time waiting for me. So, 
But yeah, it's that's very, very important to me. Okay, so let's go back to the syllabus. Any questions so far? Well, I'm traversing, it moves pretty slow. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the syllabus and remind test in a second. In a second. And here are our assignments. This is what your grade's going to come from. You have chapter exams. I'm going to drop the lowest. But you have to make an earnest attempt at each chapter exam. I've had students who made hundreds in the first five and didn't do the last one. Well, they screwed up because on the final exam, the stuff they didn't test over was on there. They didn't know any of it. So their perfect score for the semester dropped down to a B. So you have to do an earnest attempt at all of them and I will go through and drop the lowest grade. You have your homework assignments. When you look at your homework assignments, you'll see two things. You'll see media, and then you'll see the homework. The media is simply those videos I told you about that comes with, with a book. But the only way they can show up on the computer is if I give them some points. Don't believe in those. Just If you just turn it on and watch it for two seconds, it'll give you 100. I delete those. Yes. Yes. I'll get to that. I'm glad you asked, yes. But the media, no. Uh, so in other words, what I do at the end of the semester is I delete all those media grades and just have the homework grades. The bad thing about my lab, math lab, is if you only did the first homework assignment and nothing else, your average would be 100. Because all it does is, is it averages what you tried. But... And if you just did the first one, everything else, I had to go in there and put zeros in there. So that 100 turns into a five pretty quick. So again, don't believe what you what you see on the screen. You can, you can, you're in a math class, you can learn. We'll, I'll teach you guys later on how to average all your stuff yourself. So don't ask me, what's my grade in the class so far? You're in a math class, do the averages. So it's, the grades are going to come from the the chapter exams. Let's say we're halfway through the semester. We have three exams. You can average the homework assignments up to where we're supposed to be. That's where we're at chapter. We finished chapter three. So add up all the homework grades up to the, to the end of chapter three. Divide by how many grades. That's your homework average. So that's your fourth grade. You have a remind and a syllabus exam. Two more. So we have seven grades or six grades so far. So add up all those grades, divide by six, and that's your, that's your average so far in this course. I will give you two progress reports throughout the semester. It's either going to be a U or an S, satisfactory, unsatisfactory. If it's satisfactory, that means you're where you're supposed to be, you're caught up all your work and everything, and you're doing good. Unsatisfactory is if you're falling behind or if your grades are horrible. So... Don't ask me what my grade is. So I, I, I say, well, <laughs> you should fail to ask me the question. You're in a math class. Average it. That's why I opened the wrong one. This is the combo. No, but it's, it's the right, same topic, same stuff. It's just I opened the DMAT, the combo course. But anyway, Back to what we're talking about. Uh, so your your the homework grades are just self evident. The test grades are self evident. The only ones you have to worry about are what is the syllabus, what is the exam grade, uh, the, the remind test. It's either a zero or a hundred. How many of y'all have registered for remind already? Excellent. Yes, it's mandatory. You have to register for it because. That's the only communication I use. If you send me an email, I get 100, 200 messages a day. So even if I do check it more than once a week or twice a week, it'll take me one or two days to answer everybody else's first. So 
But if you send me a message to my phone, I have it right then and there, no matter where I am, I can answer it. So that's for, you do that, you get 100 for that remind test. The syllabus test. Well, after we finish talking about this, this read over the syllabus in detail. And if you understand every part of it, tell me, so send me a message or remind saying, I've read the syllabus, I either understand it or I read the syllabus and I have some questions. These are my questions. And that's it. You do that, you get hundreds of both of them. Here is our assignments for our homework. A lot of you all, okay, in this course, you're not going to learn anything. I'm not going to teach you anything new. Everything you've seen here, you've seen before in junior high and high school. I'll just show you another way of doing it. Hopefully explain it better. And hopefully now that you're paying for this course, you'll pay more attention than you did in high school. How many of you are good at math? Okay, we're going to test that out before we leave today. But uh, yeah, it's, I believe y'all, it's that it's the careless errors that will hurt people's grades. If these last sections over here, there's chapter seven, chapter eight, that's only if we have time. Normally, I never cover those anyway. I just put them in there to make it look good. Because if I didn't, then we'd have, after week 13, we're done. <laughs> Again, if we finish early, we finish early. That gives you more time to catch up and do all your work. Online, on my math lab, you will see one deadline. I only have one deadline for all your grades. 11.59 p.m. on the last day of the, la of the semester, December 12th. I will, I will give you those made up deadlines. Pretty much give yourself two weeks per chapter. Because what happened, what would happen if, if I gave, said the deadline for chapter one is the 9th of September. And one of your family members got sick and went to the hospital. I don't expect you to do any math. I expect you to be with them. Family is too important. But your homework's going to be missed. Those teachers say, well, I'll take off 20% of your grade every day you're late. No, that's not fair to you because life happens. You're adults. You're in college. You have to figure out time management. You have to progress slowly. So every what I'm going to do with these, these sheets here is every time, for example, I'm always going to start with the class day here. I'm going to start with like chapter one, section one, the title. I'm going to lecture until that section's finished. I'm going to videotape it. Then when that's done, I will get a new piece of paper, start a new recording, and the next every section will have its own set of papers and its own video. So you you can now go through and find out where you're having trouble with and see which ones you're going to you're going to watch or do. <clears throat> All right, so. Again, to fail my course, it takes a lot of work to do nothing. Ah, grades. I, first off, let me, let me stress this. I don't like liars, cheats, and thieves. The lowest scum of the scum of the earth. I have no respect for them. But I like to try to support the honesty of humans. Those who are honest will stay honest. With that being said, the homeworks, you have an unlimited number of attempts at them to get the best score. Let's say you made it 80 on the first one. You figured you could do better. You you had trouble on how enter, enter questions. So you did it again. You had an 88. You can do better. You had 90. I will keep the highest of all your attempts. Same with the tests. I'll give you three tries at all your exams. 
I'll keep the best score. If you need more tries, if you think you can do better, tell me. Send me a message. I'll increase the number. As you'll see when you get on there, I don't set them as at three every semester. I leave them. So it, one of them may have nine tries at it. There's somebody in one of my classes thought they could do better and better and better. It took them nine tries. I support that. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. I mean, if you decide to cheat and get an A, hope you're proud of yourself. And then when everybody asks you how to do that, don't bring my name into it. Because eventually you may be asked to do something in another class or help somebody who had algebra. And if you if you look dumbfounded, you can't do it, don't bring my name into it. I had nothing to do with it. Just tell them, be honest with them. Said I cheated through my algebra class and this is where it got me. I can't answer anything. So that's just a this disclaimer that I want you to understand. Uh, same with the final exam. I, I gave you two tries. I can't, I'll, I'll try to give you two or three on the final exam. But that one is at the end of the semester. I don't have much leeway there. It was at at 11.59 p.m. on December 12th, the system shuts down. That's why I don't want you guys to procrastinate and wait to the last minute to do your work. Because if you do that and any system issue occurs at that time, so too bad, so sad. You had 16 weeks to do it. Why did you wait to the last minute? So again, I'm, I'm giving you a heads up right at this moment now is do not give me sob stories and, and give me stories at, at the end of the semester that I was working on this exam or this project and it shut off. Even if it shuts off an hour early. Too bad, so sad. You should have done it weeks ago. I, again, I'm giving you all the options possible. Yes. I strongly encourage it. Actually, and I've had people who finish these, this course like in two, two and a half weeks. Because they have, again, you're going to have all the videos to watch if you want to watch those. Or if you remember it from high school or if you took a pre-algebra course and you feel pretty good about it, more power to you. Yes. Uh, if you do work ahead, I mean, it's no reason if you show up to class, then you're just getting bored because we already talked about it. You already did it. So I strongly, strongly encourage you to work ahead. For another reason, if you work ahead and you get confused, then you have a question you can ask during class. Here's an interesting kind of fact that I noticed. In lecture, when we do when I do the work on the board on, on my sheets here, it seems easy, and I'll walk you through step by step by step. When I do when I give notes during lectures, I usually on this side I'll have the procedures: step one, step two, step three, and here I'll work out the problem, and then we'll work another example following the same steps, and everything's gonna look real nice and easy. But the second you walk out that door, and you try to do your homework. You see, like, I didn't, we didn't cover this. It, it never fails. So again, the faster you can get to do your work after class, the better you're going to do. It'll reinforce it. And it'll take you less time because you, you, if you wait a couple of days or the weekend, then you have to go through, now, how did you do this? What do you do over here? So but again, I'm like you. I procrastinate. And... I use, I wait till the last minute to do my papers as well. Yeah, and again, don't do what I do, do what I say. <laughs> so, uh, grading, we talked about notes and videos. Yes, again, you have, I'll, I'll give you all those for the, what I do, I'll give you the previous semester's notes and videos. It's going to be in a, in a table form. So it'll be chapter one, section one. Let me see if I have it on this one. Media link for math 1314. There. I just haven't put in the, the solution sets yet. But this is what's here. Here you have lectures. Here are your notes and here are your videos. These are all PDF notes. These are 
So everything, it's like exactly what we're talking about in class, you'll have it there. All right, so yes. Uh, where did you sign up for Remind Free? I sent you a link. It's on the syllabus, first off, and then I sent you another email to your school email a couple of days back. Yeah, okay, now here's the here's an important thing. If you don't like using your school email, go in the system and change it to the email you prefer. Because what I have access to is your school emails, and I send a lot of stuff there. And if normally what I do is I'll, I'll send you these notes. Good morning. I'll send you these notes as, as we go day by day. I'll send you those via Remind. Because that way you know it's there and it's easier to trace and you have to log on your your phone is more reliable than the email system for the school. We'll have times we'll come to class and we can't get on the network. So what I have to do is I have to use my phone, use the hotspot on my phone to get to the network so I can do the work. So yeah, and I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do everything I can to help you all. Um, okay, now remind, let's, let me go back here. Okay, here, here's what also it tells you about the syllabus test and remind test. Read the syllabus and then look at when you finish the syllabus, send me a message or remind saying I've read the syllabus, I either understand it or I read the syllabus and I had issues. And that'll be hundreds for both of those. You can't get better easy grades than that. Oh, there's there is a census date on September 9th. Everybody know what the census date is? It's when, because if you're on student aid, if you're financial aid, what that is, it's I have to send a report whether you're in this class or not. The only way I can tell you if in this class is if you're doing the work. If not, in other words, if you haven't sent me the remind, if you haven't registered for remind, haven't sent me the message, or it's another requirement is you have to do the first homework assignment. That way it'll show me you read the syllabus, you know how to use remind, and you're actually got on the homework assignments. Do the first homework assignments, it's, it's the intro math stuff, and then make a 70 or above, and then I count you as here, and you get your uh, student eight. So uh, if, if, if you haven't done that stuff, then I will say no, the students never registered, never attended, and then you have to go through the whole paperwork and get re-registered. Okay, now here on the syllabus, the remind link should be on there. It's best if you go th go to the, right here, the remind app. If you click that link right there, I have to download it first. But if you click that link right there, it'll take you. Now, if it asks, if it asks for a code, look at the email I sent yesterday because. What it is, it's the numbers after the at sign for the course. That's the code for the course. I don't know why it's doing that. It should normally in the past, it just let the student go straight in and register. And when it asks you for an email, put the email you check most often. What else? What else? More questions, more questions. You see that? Talk about that. Yes. Good question. Yes, that's what I'm going to do next. Yes. Uh, the homework. Okay. The, the homework. I guess you also asked about bonus points too. Yes. Uh, the homework and the tests questions all come from the same data bank of questions. All I do is pick. From this chapter, this section, how many questions do I want from this section? How many questions do I want from this section? And all it does, it populates it from there. 
So when you look at the, the examples that I do or the ones I did solutions for, they won't be the same numbers as you have. It'll be different, but it'll be the same procedure. I don't believe in killing students with homework. How many of y'all have teachers where they give you like 80 problems to do or 60 problems to do? That's ridiculous. It's all the same stuff over and over and over and over. You'll see my homework assignments are, if it's, if it's easy, you may have 15 or 16 questions. But I'm talking about easy, like eight plus seven is what? Or uh, X plus Y equals Y plus X is what rule, what property of mathematics? But it's intro stuff. If it's more difficult, it'll be like five or six questions. But I try, I try to average 10 questions per assignment. Just to see if you know what's going on. The same with the tests. If, if it's an easy topic, I have a lot more questions. But I like to have around 10 to 12 questions for the test, 15 questions. Because in those questions, you can have a part A, part B, part C. And again, I don't have control. I, I don't see how many parts there are in those. And I do apologize in advance. But again, I try to make it as succinct as possible. Under 50. Because remember, you, you have, if you look at how many sections we have to cover, even if I did one or two questions for these sections, that's going to be a lot. I think we have a total of 32 sections covered. So if I did two, that's 64 questions right there. So, but yeah, I'm thinking about no more than 50. Also to help you, I have practice tests. Because what you have to do is do the homework first. Not only does it test to help you learn how to do the stuff, but it also helps you learn how to enter the information in, in the computer. Because once you learn how to do that, you're ready to take the test, take the test, and so you, so you don't have to worry about how is it, how does it want the answer. You should have done that in practice. But before you do the test, take the practice test. This is the only bonus points I'm going to give you for the entire semester. Whatever you make on the, on the practice test, 10% of that, that grade will be bonus points to your test score. So if, I get, if you made an 85 on your test, how many bonus points is that? 10% of 85? 8.5. <laughs> no, that's it. Whatever you have, where's the decimal in this number? Right there. So 10% is move it over one to the left. So a 90 will be nine points. Don't feel bad. Even a 40, four points can help you. Because if you make a if you make a 40 on the practice exam and then you take the exam and make it luckily make an 86, well, those four points is bumped you up to an A. So don't ever be discouraged. Have more faith in yourself. And the practice exams are good because again, they're free points and they'll get you ready for the exam. Now, what I do is when at the end I'll, I'll look at what the students have done. I, I see how much time you spend, how many times you tried it, how many times you tried this problem. It records everything. And I see, I, I see a report of how much work you put into the course. I believe in rewarding effort. In other words, if you didn't take any of the practice tests, you only took each test once, did only, only assignments once, and you made an 89.6. Guess what your grade's going to be? 89.6. But if you took did your homework four or five times, you tried your best, took the practice exam a couple of times, took the test a couple of times, and you made an 87.4, you may have a 90. Again, because I like to reward effort. I understand it's not your fault, but partly not your fault that you don't know math. You've covered math pretty much every 
like English. You've you studied it every semester of your entire life in school. Elementary school, every year you do math. Middle school, you did math. High school, you did math. Now you're in college, you do math. So whether you had a good, bad, or indifferent teacher in the earlier grades, that's only part of it. You, But you have the initiative, the ability to learn on your own. So I don't ever hear, well, I had a bad math teacher. We've all had bad math teachers. We have one right now. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> so, yeah, so that, those are the only bonus points I give you. So don't, again, at the end of the semester, do not start swamping me with pity, city, sad stories of, oh, I missed a week of work because my family and I did this, my, we did this and this and this. Too bad, so sad. The beautiful thing about this is it's portable. If you and your family go on a vacation or if you go into a family reunion or gathering, you can still do the work over there. I will be gone pretty much all of October. I'm doing, I'm presenting at conferences in Singapore, Sydney, Australia, and Tokyo, Japan. I was invited to give presentations for my research, but I will still be doing my lectures. For example, right now in Tokyo, it is 10.40 p.m. Yesterday. <laughs> That's the thing. Because now it's Tuesday here today. It's 10.40 p.m. in Tokyo right now on Monday. But I will still have lectures. I will lecture from my hotel room. So, again, it's this stuff goes with you anywhere you go. For $10, no. <laughs> no, but here's another thing that I believe is not fair to students. When you do your homework, where are you? Home, Starbucks, someplace with your at your friend's house or whatever. But what environment? Are you in a quiet, sterile environment or at home? No, probably not. You, have, you probably have a TV going on, uh, your little brothers and sisters running around, your mom and dad saying, hey, uh, or your dog and pets running around. And then you're supposed to take a test in the testing center. That's just, it's like a library, Shh, no breathing. So no, I will let you guys take your tests and the final exam wherever you want to take it. Again, it's all honesty. If during the semester, if I ask you a question and you have no idea what I'm talking about, you look at me like I have five eyes and yet you made hundreds in all your exams, what am I supposed to think? All it takes is one student to do that. From everybody now takes tests in the testing center. Which means you got to wake up, come over here, re register in there, put all your stuff away, take the test, and then leave. So again, I like I like to try to promote honesty, sincerity, ethical behavior of my students. Because this tells me who you are. This tells you who you are. Would you want to hire a person like you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Groucho Marx was a comedian. He said, I would never belong to a club that would have me as a member. Think about that. So this is not a good club because it'll have me as a member. I don't want to join. <laughs> I could do better than this. So, again, I'm trying to promote honesty and sincerity. Because you guys are getting close to being graduating college and starting your life as a professional. Don't be the liar, cheat, and thief. They never end up good. More questions? No questions? 
Because normally what I do at this point is I go through the rules of math. But I'll, I'll do those as we go through the semester. We'll pretty much cover one topic a day. If it's easy, we'll cover two. Actually, sometimes they're so easy and short, it'll cover three sections. But I, I won't overload you so that you, you won't have any time to do any your work. All right, so if there are any more questions, take out a piece of paper. You don't, don't tear it out of your sheet because you're going to keep it. Don't show your neighbor. Work this problem out and just show me the answer. Don't show your neighbor. And don't yell it out. Write it down and show it to me. No calculators. I don't like calculators. Yes. Yes. No, 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 oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't see that far. Oh, good job. Yeah, it, but that's an H. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's upside down. Oh, very good. Yeah, very good. Says, um, okay. Very good. But the one word you'll never use in my room, and one thing you'll never use. Oh, hold it. No, hold it. This is too easy. Do this one instead. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Remember, alcohol is flammable. Yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. No. No. Ah. Yes. Yes. No helping. No helping anybody. Yes. This you'll learn. No. Don't ever use this word around me. It's wrong. It's one of the worst things. But if you did PEMDAS, you're getting this wrong. Because what does this tell you to do? So. Americans, Americans are the only ones that use PEMDAS. The rest of the world uses this, where it's brackets, exponents, division, multiplication. But it doesn't matter because neither one of these are more important. Mathematics is a language. There are only three rules you have to, rules you have to memorize. Those are the order of operation. The first thing you do are special ops. And this is where both of these are wrong. What are only special operations? Well, what is, what is the P and E in PEMDAS? Parentheses, exponents, is that all there is in mathematics? No. What about that? What about that? What about that? What about this? What about that? In calculus, we have that. There are over 460 symbols. There are over 460 special operations in mathematics. 
but PEMDAS only deals with two. And the bad thing about PEMDAS is people memorize it in that order. And we'll, we'll go through all these next time. Then after you do those, you do multiplication division. After you do those, you do addition subtraction. How would you read this? Three divided by six divided by three times two. You read it left to right. What else do we read left to right? English, books, words. Mathematics is a language. You just gave me words instead of these symbols. You told me words, six, not this symbol there. You just go squiggle. So, no, so mathematics is a language. My job is to teach you the, the syntax, the rules of this language. How do we do this? How do we read these things? So that's the first thing I do is break 12 years of education out of your heads. I got in trouble when I first got hired in Dallas College. I got in trouble because I told the students PEMDAS is wrong. Well, the, the student went to the tutoring center. And I said, no, my professor says PEMDAS is wrong and you're teaching me wrong. That went to my dean. The dean got me in trouble. I said, no, let me prove it to you. I gave him this problem. Use PEMDAS and solve that. I said, no. This one says parentheses. Read left to right. Is there any parentheses? No. Any exponents? No. Any multiplication? Yes. Repeat the process. Parentheses, exponents. Now there's division. You get a wrong answer. It should be 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. That's the true answer. So it's my job to go through and show you all these rules of math and then show you shortcuts if they exist. All right. Any questions? Yeah, I mean, dismissed. That's it for today. <laughs> You guys want more? <laughs> no, 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 no.